Hi everyone, welcome you all. So, I hope you are learning SQL and database concept day by day. And in this series, we are going to discuss relational algebra today. Okay. So, what is relational algebra? Actually, what are the operations which can perform on a database? Uh, this is called a relational algebra. And the main operations which are prescribed by CBC for your syllabus are selection, projection, union and Cartesian product. So let us discuss one by one what are these. Okay, so select operation when we select rows on the basis of certain condition then it is said to be a select operation. Let's go ahead and read the definition from this PDF. Selection is relational algebra returning those doubles oblique records in a relation that fulfill a condition right and it is represented by sigma right and here is a relation you can see we have a student relation and we have a certain columns here admission number name class section and average suppose we say sigma a so all the ro rows having section as a a will be written as a subset or query result right and this subset is called your sigma operation right so 101 anu and 483 usha a right so these will be two output for the sigma for example here is th this thing class is equals to 12 s or uh, you can say uh, we can write like this sigma class in bracket a so all the rows having section a will be returned right for example we can write somewhat like this sigma uh, it should be a symbol sigma right uh, I'm not able to write in notepad you can understand it's a sigma and I, here I'm going to use section is equals to a and the output will be all the rows having section as a so you can write expression somewhat like this so here is a sigma symbol okay so hope you understood this selection operation the next is projection where we select certain columns or from the table we are selecting only two called columns so here is called select uh, sorry projection operation projection is a relational algebra returns those column in a relation that gives in the attribute list okay so it is represented by pi pi then you can specify number of columns from the table student right so it will return a value the next is union for union uh, we have to merge two tables right so you can see we have a student one table and student two table and remember for union both the tables should be um, compatible with each other or you can say that name number and type of column must be same right so roll number matches with the roll number and name matches with the name okay if you have similar structure of two tables then you can use a union or it is represent, uh, represented by a symbol union okay so now you can see we have uh, Uh, like this uh, pi roll number name student 1 union pi roll number name student 2 and this will return a result having all the values from the two tables okay now uh, notice one thing it is represented by Sigma here but union is represented by a union operator which is uh, which is u operator you can say capital u right and the next is cartesian product this is really very important this is also called a cross product and it is it can be easily achieved when you do not use a join in a join query right let us read this sql joins are used to relate information in different tables it combines fields from two or more tables by comparing value of a common columns a join condition is a part of a sql query that retrieves row from two or more tables 
right we have discussed this in class 11th as well what is join and if join condition is omitted or it is invalid then join condition join operation will result in a Cartesian product Cartesian product is a binary operation and is denoted by X Cartesian product returns a number of rows equal to number of rows in the first table multiplied by number of rows in the second table so this statement is really very very critical here to here because it gives you how many rows it will return when we have a Cartesian product and similarly this statement the next statement is also really very important which will reveal how many column we will get when we have a cross product so it will give you a sum of the two participating tables column right so for example if we have two table in table one two column in a table one and two column in table two then it will result into four or if we have two and three here then it will result into five so let's see here you can see we have a product and have having three columns in customer we have three actually four columns then if we try to have a cross product between these two so result you can see one two three four uh, and uh, if you count this will be seven let's count it one two three four five six and seven why it is so because we have three columns from the product table and four column from the customer table now notice the number of rows four here and I think it's five four into five is equals to 20 so total number row in this result will be 20 let's count it so 1 2 3 4 5 5 plus 5 10 10 plus 5 is equals to 15 and 15 plus 5 is equals to 20 right so total number of rows returned by the cross product will be 20 right so here is the calculation now let us see how these rows are formed notice product number 1 1 one so this is the first record in our product table and this is copied five times okay let's check it out so this is one 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 computer and fifty thousand this is the first record and if you notice customer number one zero one Kavita Delhi and three 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 is the first record in the customer table and similarly 201 is matched with 111 and then this is matched with 301 this is a same record is matched with 401 and same record is matched with 501 so we have a complete combination of all the records from product table to customer table similarly second record from the product table is matched with all the records in a customer table third record matched with all the records in the product table similarly and so on so that's why it is giving you 24 multiplied by 5 is equals to 20 so this is really very important and there is always a question which ask uh, for to calculate the degree and cardinality of the table so cardinality will be number of rows in a result or in a table then it is said to be a cardinality so if you are going to calculate a cardinality of a two table then you have to uh, find a product of the rows and that will be your cardinality for the product okay so let us see what we have revised in these four days right so we have defined a relation relation was a simple table which is a combination of rows and columns and domain domain is a different or atomic values in our table for example if we have a section a b c d and these are repeated multiple times but in database we are going to store a particular value in one place for example a a is stored no matter how many times we have stored used a in my table but it is stored in as a one value or atomic value in that particular domain okay the next we have used it uh, learned a tuple and this tuple is a number of rows 
sorry actually a row or an individual row in our table is called a tuple attribute a column in a table is called a attribute primary key a primary key is used to uniquely identify each table in a in a relation so that we can have we can identify each value and we can use it to delete search or modify it candidate keys all the keys which can serve as a primary key but we haven't chosen yet then these all keys are called candidate keys alternate keys obviously the keys which are left out after making a primary key are called alternate keys then we have a different type of statements ddl statements data definition language uh, used to describe your data or used to create or alter your schema objects just like table if you want to create it then we have to use a create table command or if you want to modify this table then you are going to use a alter table command right so dml statement is used to manipulate the data for example if you are going to insert a table then insert a row then you are going to use a insert statement right and then we have a uh, string data types numeric data type we have already discussed it and uh, there there are care and where care in mysql care is fixed length and where care is a variable character length data type which can store uh, text for alpha numeric values and then next we have a numeric type in numeric num numeric type we have a number int integer float and decimal in mysql so we will be using these data types and we can specify precision and scale there also precision is total number of digits and and scale is the number of decimal points date is a different data type and though in mysql we have a time as well and then we have discussed these operations four operations uh, in boolean algebra that is selection uh, when we select certain number of records on the basis of values in particular column then it is said to be a selection and it is represented by sigma similarly we have a projection in projection we select now certain columns then it is said to be a project operation and it is represented by pi and then we have discussed a union union is represented by u and for this we have two tables with a similar structure we can um, add these values in the union operation duplicate recall will be automatically removed from the resultant table and then finally we have discussed the cross or cartesian product this is really really very important do learn this because many times this question is in your cbc board examinations so sql joints are forget about this definition actually cross product is formed when we multiply each row of each row with the rows in another table forming uh, multiplication of rows and then we set uh, we call it a cartesian product and number of rows formed by the cartesian product or in cartesian product is number of rows multiply uh, in table 1 multiplied by number of rows in table 2 and the columns are simply added right so this is all about our first chapter that is concept of database and from tomorrow we are going to learn a new chapter that is called uh, sql or we will be working with SQL right so till then goodbye and have a nice day bye bye